An important reference point for new skiers is the understanding of an ability to execute ranges of motion in the fore and aft, vertical, and lateral planes. Here we see a demonstration of the movement of the skis fore and aft under the body while keeping the core quiet. Notice the angle of the lower leg changes while the skis move back and forth underneath the body. This isolates the movement into the legs and feet. In the vertical plane, students should go from as low as they can be without being on their heels to fully upright by pushing the belly button forward. Seen from the side, it's apparent that hand and arm position aids in bringing the body weight and the core forward as the student goes from low to a fully upright position. Rotary is perhaps the most important new skill for a student to understand. The key is to rotate the leg from the hip socket, creating a bow tie pattern in the snow as you see here. The pattern made in the snow without skis is quite obvious. If it's from the front, you'll see a big wash from the heel. If it's standing on the heel, you'll see a big wash from the front. That is a fundamentally different movement than the one you see here, where the foot is rotating from the center. This must be accomplished by isolating the movement of the leg itself. As you can see as we pan up, the pelvis and torso remain stable while the leg rotates in the hip socket. This is a critical movement for all alpine skiers, and it's one that your students should have solidly before you move on. While wearing skis, the pattern itself is even more obvious and should be a little bit easier for your students to feel with the added swing weight of the ski. If you see the feet coming out and the tip of the ski staying in place, that's a push and that's a fundamentally different movement and not what we are trying to accomplish. Again, from the center, an isolation of the leg, moving the ski back and forth from the middle. In the lateral plane, it's important to understand we can achieve an edge ski in a number of different ways. By tipping the whole body, by moving the hips to the side, by using the knees to create knee angulation, and finally at slower speeds we can use just the ankles. The knees and hips moving you see here are sympathetic to the moving of the ankles laterally inside the boots. While some people may be comfortable right away maneuvering on two skis, Many will require some time maneuvering on just one in order to get more comfortable. It's critical to understand that moving a ski over the snow requires moving the body with that ski in all directions, using the skills that we've developed standing still without skis and with skis on. Shin to boot contact and moving the body forward in all directions is key to this important exercise. For added benefit, Try the arc in the other direction with the ski on the inside of the turn. Difficulty with this maneuver will make it even more apparent if the skier is behind their feet. Here we see a demonstration of what may happen with a student who doesn't quite understand the concept involved here. Here the student is pushing the ski out in front and is not getting the same sense of stability that he would get if he was centered over his feet. This becomes apparent in the change of direction as the front of the ski comes off the snow. There's not much sense of stability on that foot. In the other direction, it becomes almost awkward because the foot you're pushing with gets tangled up in the tail of the ski. This is not what we're after and needs to be corrected. Habits learned when learning to walk can be hard to break. So here's a little trick to helping people who really struggle with the idea of not putting their feet out in front of them in order to move on skis. As you can see, we call it the hamster wheel for a reason. You don't go anywhere when you do that. So if a student is struggling with moving forward, first ask permission, then just lightly put a hand on the parka right in front of the belly button and pull the core forward as the student strides. That'll help give them the idea that they need to commit to the foot that they're moving forward rather than put it there before putting their weight on it, as you can see Ali trying to do again here. It's not working for him, so again the core moves forward and he's getting success. This leads to the ability to do a gliding stride and then perhaps can be combined with a little bit of the rotary we've been working on and taken into a little bit of a glide. Again, we're still working on the flats and the reference point is to be comfortable maneuvering on flats. At this point, it's all about building confidence and comfort while maintaining a good athletic centered stance over the skis. We see here some variations in how to move the feet and legs underneath the body 
The key is that the Corps continues to move forward. Poles may or may not be used to aid in this movement as long as they don't become crutches or an impediment. Finally, you may get to some basic skating. This is going to combine all of the skills that we've worked on up to this point. You can see movement in the fore and aft, the vertical, and the lateral planes as the skier skates from foot to foot, flexing and extending the leg joints, moving the core, riding up onto the edge, back to a flat ski, and then being able to change direction of both feet. If your new skiers are performing anything like what we see here, they've achieved the reference point and are ready for the next phase of their skiing adventure. In skiing, what goes down must come back up again. So let's go back to one ski and master the task of sidestepping, which will be our way of climbing back up out of the mini pipe after our runs here. As you can see from the demonstration, it's important to commit the weight to the uphill foot, standing on the uphill edge of both feet. In Ali's demonstration, you can see him angle the leg and commit the hip over that foot before settling the other foot next to it. The steps are small, and the head should be kept up, not looking down at the feet. This will help keep the skier oriented in the proper direction, make it less likely that they'll turn and face up the hill and slide backwards. Ray's pointing to the hip, the key that gets the body weight over the uphill foot without the step being large enough to be on the downhill edge. Diagonal sidestepping may be more comfortable for some people who struggle with the idea of walking sideways up a hill. We put ski poles in the snow for aids here to help the skier determine exactly where up and down are. It may seem obvious to you and I, but new skiers do not own this skill, so it may be a little bit more difficult for them to understand exactly where the fall line is. In this demonstration, we're using the diagonal step between the poles to make it a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more like natural walking. In this mode, it's important to make sure that the body weight moves forward over the uphill foot before committing the weight to it. The herringbone is another way to climb up the hill, and once again, it's important that the body weight and belly button area move forward over the foot before committing weight. If the skier tries to put the foot out in front of him, as you'll see Ali try to do here, he's going to struggle and go nowhere. The ski stays too flat, and there's nothing behind him to help push his body weight up the hill. Everything quiets right down, and much better success. We can combine the idea of the herringbone with a little bit of the skating that we practiced on the flats earlier. Have your students climb up out of the mini pipe in a herringbone and then begin to add a little bit of glide to each stride. That turns a herringbone into a rudimentary skate and will help them feel even more confident as they move across the terrain. The reference point for our first run is merely a centered, balanced stance with the weight equally distributed over the middle of both feet. The configuration in the mini pipe will allow the skier to move forward and then perhaps a slight roll back on the far wall. The centered stance will enable the skier to stay balanced over the skis as this occurs. We're not looking for a braking maneuver or any kind of direction change, just the ability to maintain balance as the ski is in motion. Depending on snow conditions or the timidity of your students, it may be advantageous to use a slight angle when you drop into the mini pipe. This will lessen the relative pitch. Here we see Ray using his poles to help push himself into the pipe. This fosters a good hand and arm and upper body position and doesn't require a lot of force to get moving. These early runs are critical to getting the student to understand that the body weight needs to maintain over the middle of the skis and not drop behind. A different way of entering the pipe is to actually flex forward into the front of the boots dropping the tips of the skis onto the snow, and moving forward. Using this method, it's important to stand a little taller as one begins the rollback so you don't overpressure the front of the skis. How's Ali getting into the pipe here? Some people may still struggle with their balance as they drop into the mini pipe and the skis accelerate. So here's a little trick to help them stay forward as they descend. You'll need to be out of your skis to do this properly. 
in the bottom of the mini pipe, have your student extend his arms with the palms facing towards you. Grab the hands with your thumbs in the palms and your fingers wrapped around the back of the hands and have your student press against you as you push the student up the hill. Allow them to come back towards you while maintaining pressure of their hands against yours. You can walk them down into the bottom of the pipe, or as we'll see in a moment, a demonstration where Ray moves out of the way and allows Ali to finish the run unassisted. So he's merely aiding him in getting up in the pipe in an athletic-centered stance. The hands forward enable Ali to stay over the middle of the skis while moving forward. For your more advanced, here's something a little bit more fun. Carry speed and shoot the gap. Remember, this is not a progression, but merely a bag of tricks. The key here is to be looking for the centered athletic stance, the core moving forward over the feet, and the ability to manipulate the equipment in all the planes we discussed earlier. A major reference point for all alpine skiers is the ability to make and maintain a wedge position. This is characterized by an inward rotation of both legs, with the weight balanced over the middle of the feet and the skis remaining relatively flat on the snow. You'll notice the tips of the skis actually come a little bit closer together. The feet will separate slightly. That is fundamentally different than pushing. You see here, where the tips of the skis actually come further apart, and the skis go out onto a high edge. Here, the skier ends up on the heels. That's not the result we're looking for. One way to get the sensation of rotating the legs in this manner is to use the lip of the mini pipe as we see here. The tips of the skis are over the edge, and it becomes quite easy to maneuver the skis in both directions to form the wedge while maintaining a flat ski. Here are some ways to practice the wedge in the mini pipe. Just a straight run, looking for shin to boot contact, good stance over both feet. They can step out of the wedge to come back, or in some cases, you may see someone use a method like a backwards wedge as they begin their rollback. That's an indicator they're over the middle of the feet if they can rotate the feet in both directions. The boot assisted wedge turn is a great way to help people with a first direction change. Out of your skis, use your uphill boot to block the downhill ski right at the boot. Then help direct the student by flattening the downhill ski and steering the outside ski around a skidded arc. The contours of the mini pipe can also help develop the skills needed to execute wedge turns. Remind the student to actively steer both feet throughout the direction change, maintaining shin to boot contact in an upright balanced stance. The mini pipe can be entered in an angle, straight in, any way that room and snow conditions allow. Here Ray's using the banks of the pipe to help with the direction change to begin to link turns together. As your students practice and gain confidence, you're always looking for that upright, relaxed stance, the core moving, shin to boot contact, and active steering of both feet. Reference goals for our new skiers leaving the learning area are the ability to maintain an upright balanced stance, hold a wedge, and create direction changes. These tools and others you'll learn through our training clinics can help as you work towards these goals. When they're in place, you're ready for the trail. Now that you've got a brand new group of skiers, it's time to take them out on the Learn to Ski Trail and show them how what they've just learned applies to skiing down a mountain. Your responsibility code should be addressed by pointing out flat areas for stopping and encouraging your skiers to look ahead for safety. You can expect some inconsistent results at first as students are refining what they've already learned. Above all, have fun on the ride. 
Practice makes perfect, but perfect is not the goal here. The goal is to have fun. The first feature you'll encounter as you leave the learning area is the return wall. It's basically a larger version of the mini pipe. Remind your students to look ahead and keep a nice balanced stance as the return wall brings them back, mitigating the pitch onto the trail. Out on the trail itself, you'll find the rollers. These can be used in multiple ways, either in a gliding wedge, use the rollers themselves to create slight direction changes, or as we see here in a straight one, and actually pumping on the back sides to create a little bit of extra momentum. Now you're ready for your first turn. This is merely a depression in the snow making that brings the skier into a left and then a right turn. This doesn't do all the work for you. The skier does need to stay in that upright, relaxed stance and steer both legs through the turn. It's another chance to encourage vision looking forward. Once accomplished, you're ready for our roller coaster. Learn to Ski Trail features an extended series of bank turns. This helps our new skiers create a rhythm and flow to their turns, just like the more accomplished skiers do on the main mountain. It also fosters the idea of speed control through turn shape, a key to efficient skiing at all levels. It's best to enter the first bank turn at a slight angle to keep the skier's initial speed manageable. Expect skiers to ride up on each bank slightly, allowing the transition to slow them a bit. Remember, the banks do not create the turn for the skier, they merely assist. The skier must remain in a functional, balanced stance and steer both skis through the turns. All the skills learned in the learning area above are combined here to create effortless turning. The final section of Killington's Learn to Ski Trail is the perfect slope. Here the turns themselves are not banked so much but the trail is slightly concave in order to help keep skiers on line. Brushes have been placed in the snow in order to give indicators for the skier of where to turn. Again, we're encouraging vision forward and maintaining that upright relaxed stance while skiing in a rhythm, gradually controlling speed through turn shape. The bottom section of the Learn to Ski Trail as it comes toward the Killington Road is the steepest section that your skiers will ski on their first run. This may cause a little bit of apprehension, but again, reinforce their skills and emphasize the fun, and you'll find that most of them can descend this pretty comfortably. Again, there are brushes there for guides, but are not necessary to be used. As you see here, the skier is simply using a comfortable rhythm to descend this section of the trail. We're nearing the bottom. It's getting to be time to celebrate. The final section of the learning trail parallels the road and leads to the top of the Snowshed Magic Carpet and the Snowboard Learning Area. Because of traffic here, it's important to remind your skiers to look ahead and be aware of others. Stay to the left and bring your group to the base of the Magic Carpet Run. Show them the lodge, help them get their bearings, and let them know what their options are for practicing later on. As a coach, you should expect many different outcomes at this point. Some may be making parallel turns, some wedge turns, some struggling even with those but it's important to celebrate all their outcomes because after all, you've got a group of brand new skiers.